Hi there, you guys. Welcome. Today, I'm going to show you how to create the double exposure animal in PhotoP. First step, what you'll want to do is open up PhotoP, and you're going to file open, and uh, you're going to pick the animal that you want to use. For this example, I'm going to be using this picture of a bear like this. The first thing that I want to do is I want to start cutting out the background. You can use the quick selection tool, which if you go over to the tool console and do a right click, you'll see it says quick selection. And the way the quick selection works is, is that it recognizes the contrast of the edge. So you'll, you'll select that and you're then going to sort of dance around the edge. And it's going to then pick up where it defines the contrast being. Okay, so you can use that. And by the way, if there are parts where it's picking up background information, you just hold down the alt key. Okay, so the alt key, and then you go back to the edge and you can then tighten up where the selection is being made. I'm going to use actually the, uh, because the background on this piece has got a lot of visual information, I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool for this one, make my life really super simple. You might have to uh, unlock the background. So over here on the right side of the screen, you'll see in the layers palette, you see where the hand is, it says background. I might have to double click that if there's a padlock here uh, to take the padlock off so that I can then start removing chunks. I encourage you when you're working with the lasso tool to remove just chunks rather than go through and select the entire image. And uh, the reason being is, is that when you remove smaller parts, uh, it's a little bit safer because when you go to remove large chunks of the image, what can oftentimes happen is, is that somewhere along the way your you know, elbow gets bumped or something like that. And all of a sudden you've just lost 15 minutes of your life selecting, uh, selecting parts of the graphic. Okay. So I'm just going to dance around the edge here. And when I cut this, I'm trying to get as close to the fur as possible. So there you go. For this particular demo, again, I'm just this is kind of quick and dirty. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because the idea behind this is how it is we're going to get uh, the double exposure effect going on. So let me get the back end of the leg here, and I'm going to leave the ground in place. Okay, so you don't have to cut the entire background out. If you want to leave the ground there to sort of anchor the image, uh, by all means, you can do that. So here we go. I'm going to Come up to the face. And then I complete the circuit. So again, when you're using the lasso tool, you want to, wherever it is that you started it, uh, that's where you're going to end it. And that's probably, um, maybe I zoom in a little bit, um, tap Z. And, or you can just tap control plus, and maybe I'll remove just a little bit inside here so that that, uh, foreground grass just kind of flows across it horizontally. Let's see. There we go. Remember again, when you see the checkerboard exposed like this, what that means is, is that that portion of the image is transparent. Okay. So it's actually see-through. Okay. There we go. Double click. Let me hit control X. And I'm going to next, I'm going to fill uh, let's see, control X. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the landscape. Okay, so I go control O or you can go file open. Go down to the picture of Yosemite. I'm going to do control A for all, control C for copy. Then up here at the top, I'm going to select the tab that says bear. And I'm going to hit control V. Control V is going to be pasting it. Now, as you can see, the image of Yosemite was significantly larger than the picture of the bear. So I need to resize it. And I'm going to zoom out, control minus minus. I'm going to go edit, free transform. And uh, you'll see the bounding box, right? And these are handles. I'm going to grab the corner handle. And remember, when you're doing free transform, if you want it to scale proportionately, uh, you don't want it too fat, too skinny, or distorted. You're going to grab the corner. You're going to hold the shift key down, and you're then going to resize it. And I'll then move move it up here. And I'm going to uh, situate it so that it's just above the body portion since that's where I'm going to be uh, erasing. I'm going to scale it down just a tad there. Okay, and then I hit Enter. Okay, so that's the critical part. You're using that 
um, free transform is, is that you grab the corner, you're going to hold the shift key. Then when you get done, you're just going to hit the enter key. Now I'm going to go over to layers palette and I'm going to unclick the eyeball, the visibility eyeball. So I click that. Now all I've got is the bare left and I'm going to use the magic wand. So to access the magic wand in photo P, you're going to tap the W key on your keyboard. So I tap W. Now it's going to show up to quick selection or object selection. So I hit W again and, or usually you're going to have to hit W three times to get the magic wand to appear. You can also just select it, right click it over here in the tool console. So I could just do a right click and hit magic wand. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap magic wand on the background. Uh, I got to make sure that I've selected because right now what I did was I selected the Yosemite picture. I need to move to the bear picture. So I'm going to actually double click. I'll label that bear. I'll label this one Yosemite. Okay. Uh, select the bear layer. That's important. That's the number one thing when working with photo is, is that people, they fail to be on the right layer. You actually have to you know, select this layer for you to be able to work in it, to, for it to be active. Okay, so I select the bare layer. I'm going to then grab my magic wand. I select the checkerboard. Okay, now I've also got some checkerboard between the legs. And so to access, to uh, also pick that up, I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to hit click on these little areas in between. Okay, let's see. Okay, so um again i'm gonna tap the background here with the wand and then i'm gonna hold the shift key and then i'm going to click on these little areas in between the front legs and the body uh, to select those the next step is i need to invert the selection this is where it might get a little confusing for you but remember the nice thing about the shortcuts is is that they're using whatever the action is it's usually the first letter of that action so invert starts with i we're going to hold down control shift. Okay. So hold down control and shift and then hit I. And now what it's done is it's selected the inverse. And so we've selected the picture of the bear. And then we're going to click the eyeball on the picture of Yosemite. And the next thing I'm going to do is I need to uh, remove the edges of this landscape. So Again, what I'll do is hold down shift control I to invert the selection I hit control X. Make sure that you're on the landscape. Okay. So I'm going to go over here, click on Yosemite. Okay. Hit control X. Now I'm going to be using the, um, I'm going to shift the order of these layers. So I'm going to drag Yosemite underneath the bear. So I can't see that. Okay. I'm going to select the bear. Now, at this point, what I want to do is I want to paint or fill the background white. And so I'm going to grab the, the paint bucket. Now, remember, the paint bucket is underneath the gradient tool. So you can tap G twice, G on your keyboard twice, or you can just do a right click, hit paint bucket. And down here, what we've got is the, are the color swatches, foreground and background. Right now, white is on top, which I want. But most likely, uh, what, as you're working in Photo P, black is going to be on top because that's the default. So all you need to do is to switch the order of these is hit the arrow keys. Okay, so now white's on top and I'm going to then click. It fills in the bear, uh, the background white, okay, which is good. And the next step is I'm going to, again, select inverse, uh, do the invert selection. So I hold down control, shift, I, and I'm going to use the eraser tool. So I grab, just tap E eraser. I need to modify the uh, the size of the eraser. So I'm going to go up to the top left where the dot is, where it says 15, and I'm going to enlarge it. And then I kind of test, oh yeah, that's uh, maybe a little bit less. Okay. I also need to change the hardness. So right now it's at hundred percent. So I'm going to go back down to zero hardness. This is like spray paint and this is like crisp edge. So right now I want to work with more of like a spray paint as I erase the interior. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just now, uh, as you can see, I just made a giant hole in the bear um, and I'm gonna control Z. Okay, that's undo. And I'm gonna change the opacity of the eraser. So this is a pretty critical part up here at the top. It says opacity. 
I'm going to change that back down to like 24. I don't know. It depends on what your image is and how much you want to erase. But, uh, you know, 24 is probably going to do a softer job. And I'm going to then go through and I'm going to start erasing this until that image of Yosemite starts to pop through the bear. And you can decide at this point how far down you want to go. Remember, control Z if you go too far, you can, you know, back step. And so that's what I'm doing here. All right. So there you go. That's it in a nutshell. And uh, again, the opacity is key because what it does is it creates a smooth transition that blends the fur with the landscape. Um, and so you can pull it out and you can spend more time working on this and cleaning it up. And that there is just about it. We're going to then hit control D. Okay. D is in dog for deselect. I'm going to then uh, go layer. I go flatten image. Once I have the image flattened, I'm going to go under file. I'm going to go export as a JPEG and then upload it. You can put the, qual the quality can be 100%. And then I just hit save. Uh, and then you're going to upload it to double exposure animals there in Canvas. Hey, thanks you guys for joining me. This was a lesson on how to create a double exposure animal landscape. And that's it for today. Thanks. Take care. Bye.